Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Say goodbye to June and welcome July of 1982. The last game we played was Zorg 2. We played it four times, so hopefully you haven't forgotten. Let's press forward into July of 1982. Our very first game, released on the Apple II, is AE. That's right. AE. This game is awesome. Um, let's take a look at the box for AE. This is by Broderbund Software. Jun Wada and Makoto Horai, labeled on the front of the box. We gotta give the developers credit here. Let's flip it over on the back, and you can see this is uh, the disc version. Uh, this is also available on cassette. First came Sonus, then Toyotas, and then from the future labs of Mitsubishi Yuku, the AE designed as a pollution-fighting robot intended to save the world. The AE slipped through quality control out the unsuspecting universe. While the fate of the free world does not depend on getting rid of the AE, they have become a nuisance, much like motorcycle gangs or geese on the runway. What is going on? <laughs> Who wrote the back of this box? The Mitsubishi Yuku company, in conjunction with Broderbund Software, has made this disc available to computer owners to allow us to aid in controlling this pest. Note, the AE is not an endangered species. AE is the Japanese word for ray, as in manta ray or stingray. You'll need to turn the disc over after the side's on, blah, blah, blah. So make sure you load the game correctly. It's not guaranteed, but Broderbund guarantees if it's damaged, please get five. You can uh, replace it for $5. Thanks, Broderbund. <laughs> I hope it's not After Effects. It's for Manta Ray. Let's take a look at the rest of the artwork we have. I mean, look at the box. The, the, the front of this is awesome. It is us destroying manta rays in the future. And we have the disc, which if you look on the back, it is Japanese. And then if we look on the front, it has Broderbund. Broderbund's pretty smart. At this time, they're um, uh, they're getting a presence in Japan. And the two developers here uh, are Japanese origin. And this was released as well as North America and Japan. So, well, it sounds, seems a little strange. Yeah, they had Apple IIs in Japan, too. There's the example of the screenshot. Apple IIs were everywhere. You can escape from them. Let's take a look at the manual for AE. After you boot it up, press the space bar. This game uses both joystick and paddle controls on your Apple II. Press the button to play. Letting go of the button causes the launch missiles to detonate. And I'll explain when we start the game. It's a cool idea if you've never played this one. The objective is, the rays were designed as a pollute fighting, pollution fighting robots by a well-intentioned multinational corporation. This is another example of the story really does not matter. It, it, who cares? It, the gameplay is what really matters. Who cares about manta rays that you're going to blow up? Your task is to drive off the pests, way, the pestering waves of AE from the Earth and push them far off the planet to the outer wastelands of the known universe. You start with three missile batteries. There are eight levels to play as you drive them deeper and deeper into space. You move on to the next level. You have to make at least three perfect attacks, and we'll explain that one as well later. A perfect attack is when you annihilate every AE in a wave using your remotely fired anti-AE blaster missiles. Only when you have pushed the AE all the way up out of the corner of the cosmos to about 600 billion light years up into the left of the Milky Way that will they finally leave us alone. We hope. <laughs> this is awesome. And there's some more controls for you. Uh, R is to start over any time, S is toggle sound, and then just for um, the sake that this was also in Japan, here is the Apple II instructions, and if you look on the bottom, I'm not sure why it says Canon. Was Canon the one that was distributing Apple IIs in certain parts of Japan, or was Canon doing one of the first Apple II ripoffs, because those are a thing, trying to copy the architecture of the Apple II. All right, so we also have the side of the disc we'll be flipping over. Let's pop in AE by Programmers 3, published by Broderbund at the beginning of July 1982. This game has the very first mechanic we've ever seen for a shooter. For the opening, I'm going to speed this up. It takes a while to load. You can see it was, it was cracked by someone else. But as we go into this, check out that animation. They made a manta ray go across the screen. That is like high quality stuff. That's like Amiga quality. While it is only just one color, the animation looks awesome. By Jun Wada and Makoto Horai. This is great. We'll keep going faster and faster. There it is. Thank you. And now it's going to ask us to turn the disc over, so we have to use our pretend it's 1982 and flip the disc over. From side A to side B, we want it read only. And go. Let's play some AE. <laughs> Soon we're going to have storylines that involve Dustbusters too. 
That's actually a really good sound for the Apple II. Okay, so this controls like most fixed shooters. You just move left, right, and fire. But here's the deal. Whenever you push the fire button, notice my shots just fade off into the distance. And it doesn't really make, like I'm holding the button down for my paddle, paddle control and it's just doing nothing to the shots. This employs a mechanic where you have to let off of the button to make a small explosion as I die at the bottom. So the timing of this depends on you not just pushing down the button, but releasing the button. Once you cause the explosion, you want to make a chain reaction to blow up multiple ships. I'm sorry, multiple rays, multiple AE. And they have the luxury of going all the way down to the bottom of the screen to destroy you. So you want to be able to get rid of them as soon as you can. In a way, the design of the movement of the, uh, of the creatures reminds me of Galaga. But you could also say because we're only moving left and right, this could still be like Galaxian. But it, this is in a league of its own. There is no other shooter that is the release press. There we go. Once you release from the, the shot, that's when it makes the explosion that does any damage. And the goal is you want to make an explosion cause the chain reaction to blow up multiple man manta rays at once. The only way you can go to the next level is if you have a perfect attack. If you look over on the score side, the perfect attack means in one shot or one explosion, I've destroyed the entire row of manta rays in one shot. And you have to get three perfect attacks before you move on to the next round. And another reason you want to do it is because if they are let loose like they are now, they fly all the way to the bottom of the screen and destroy you. Yeah, graphics are cool. The 3D perspective is really nice. Oh, is it already done? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, they gave us a nice game over at the end. We died too many times already. Oh, the shots blending in with the background. Oh, almost. You almost got a perfect shot. It's not just based on when the explosion is. It's your timing. You have to have the timing to destroy all of them at the same row, too. See, didn't have the timing that time, but I did finish off. Okay, got it that time. Got a perfect attack. Oh, I thought the perfect attack meant you had to do the entire row, but it's just d destroying the whole league with as many shots as you can fire. Let's see if we can knock it out. Eventually, when you play it enough, you'll memorize the patterns of the manta rays and know where to fire. Nope, didn't time it right. You only have one shot per movement or per cycle. Very similar to the Space Invader style shot. But the only difference is that explosion. It makes the gameplay a very different. And this 3D perspective is a really nice touch. Yeah, the gameplay's king. Oh, see, I, they're coming down for the wave and I should have had the attack. But the longer you play, you get used to the patterns, the memorization of it. So a brand new mechanic, something we've never seen before, not even in the arcades, of letting off of the button that you fire to cause the attack to happen. Was that the last ship? I think it was. They're going to give us our fancy, <laughs> the mana rays dance for our game over. Yeah, the background is very, very nice. 3D perspective is fantastic. Yeah, but um, yeah, as, as Victor said in the chat, yeah, the shots blending in, it, it, it is a little tricky. I wouldn't fault it. For doing something new, uh, and you can tell that they spent time to program this. Border Bund obviously had something uh, good in the works to bring this out. But uh, Border Bund's ahead of the game. They're one of the uh, developers that's deciding, we need to get these video games all over the world. And because of that, they're going to have a really big hit that's coming up later that is going to influence the uh, Japanese almost bigger than any of the other games we've had. If it hasn't already, because they've already done releases that are huge, obviously, Pac-Man and... And, and things that are done by Konami and uh, Namco. Oh, man. But this is one example of the beginning of uh, th their ability to make video games all over the world. Broder Bun's going to be big. They have the connections. Almost too many connections. Let's see if we can time it. Oh, almost got it. And then you can see the last one ran away. And then they go into this bonus round. It does take just a little bit to get used to, but this this different play style for a shooter is so refreshing. For someone that plays every single game, this is awesome. This is a, a, another breath of fresh air, trying something new and different for a shooter. And for a home computer release, this is, this is great. It is only a one-player affair here on the Apple II. It's by Broderbund, so we're gonna get lots of releases or re-releases on other systems. 
This is the very first time it was released on the Apple II. There you go, Errol's already thrown out reviews for three out of five. What would you say, is this pretty average for the time? For all the games you could play on a home computer? Is it above average? This The gameplay is what really sets it apart. I really love it. Something new and fresh. I like the games on the home computer that feel like they should have been arcade games, or you should have already seen this in the arcade. And this is another one. There we go. Yep, I'm with you. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It is um, not a whole lot of different enemies. Oh, look, there we almost got three perfect shots. <laughs> oh, go. Yes, there you go. Got three. So moving on to the next level. After three perfect attacks, it now switches up the background. Whoa. We are the user. Oh, they have different patterns now. Oh, I have to mem memorize them. So you want to be able to get, get, get rid of him before he goes away? Okay, we finished it. We got the perfect attack in. Here's another one coming. Got it. Second perfect attack. Oh, and they came. They got me. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you, Mark. I'm actually leaning closer to four stars of all the games you could play on a home computer. The 3D perspective is also something that's um, a great idea for this game. <laughs> if, if we are in the game grid. So cool. All right, so there's a quick taste of AE for the Apple II. I'd say of all the games we could play on on the home computer for this time, this is an awesome great game. I'm going to go four stars for AE of everything you could play. It's the gameplay. It's the way that you can control both joystick and paddle and changing up the shooter. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And they switched it up. There, there, there's different, I think there's four or five different screens for levels. But that's not all. Let's move on to our next title. AE was also released for the Atari home computer. Let's take a look at AE on the Atari 800. Starting with the box. Same as usual by Broderbund. The front of the box is amazing. Yeah, the way that they... Uh, the home computer releases that usually look like they were done in someone's backyard. Th this looks like high quality. They hired someone to do the front. And it makes sense because I never saw the front of the box. When I first played the game, I just thought we were shooting any any other shooter. You can't really tell they're manta rays in the game. But then you see the front of the box and it's like, whoa, looks pretty cool. Let's see what other art re artwork we have for AE. There's the ad you would have seen at the time. An arcade adventure. AE produced by industrial giant to control pollution on Earth have sl slipped quality control. You bet they have. We gotta destroy them all now. Yes, that's right. And even in the screenshots. Yeah, there you go. There's an example of what it was like. And then well, this is the catalog that Broder Bun had at the time with another release. I think we've already, yeah, we already played C Fox. Is that the, yeah, the computer release for C Fox? And then AE, AE is over here on the left. With an example of the screenshot, oh, bear in mind, I'm going to show this this again. The screenshots here for the Apple II are whenever you emulate a com the, the computer, you're not seeing what would be seen in this at the time with the artifacting. It actually has some color, and I'll show you. It's, it's programmed in black and white, but they already knew that the artifacting was going to cause some color. So this is another one on disk that you flip over from each side. Let's pop it and play AE. In the beginning of July 1982 for the Atari home computer. It's some of the same, but slightly different. Oh yeah, and the asteroid belt's another one that you're going to see later. You go to different places. You got to take the manta rays out further and further away from Earth. What did they say? 600 billion light years away? There he goes. You can see the slight shimmy of color that they have. And as usual, we got to flip it over in the back. This is by Programmers 3. Who is the third programmer? So we're flipping over our virtual disk, and let's go. We got our Atari home, Atari VCS joystick in there, and it also takes the Atari paddle. Either one you can play on. That sounds familiar. It actually sounds pretty close to the Apple II. They really weren't utilizing much of the pokey chip there. I wonder why I didn't get a chain reaction there. Oh, I, no, I didn't get the perfect attack for that one. That was close. Oh, they got me. Wow, the sound effect, though, for the explosion is a little different. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, it sounds slightly different. I'd say the sound effects are better here on the Atari home computer. But that's because, I mean, think about it. Apple II, usually we don't get the most sound effects during the game. Oh, there it is. They got the fancy game over. Thanks, Manta Rays. <laughs> it is really hard to see the font on the right side. That's right. Navigating through an asteroid field, the odds are... What did C-3PO say? 447,000 to 1. Never tell me the odds. So gameplay-wise, I'm playing this one with the VCS joystick, so it feels really good. Depending on whether you play with paddle or with uh, joystick. The thing is, it's because the shot explodes whenever you want it to, it uh, really doesn't matter for movement, movement-wise. You, you may have a little bit finer tune controls with the paddle, but they, they program it with the option for it. Oh, there we go. We got one. So there's two attacks. Perfect attacks. Nice. It feels so satisfying when you make that connection in one shot and blow everybody up. All right, so here we go. Let's see what the second level looks like here on uh, the... They're loading up through the disc for level two. <laughs> yeah, they are. All right, so level two is... Where's the Tron grid? We don't have the game grid on level two. I wonder if that means they got rid of it for this one and we don't have the same amount of screens. Oh, they got me. You have to watch out for the shots, but I haven't seen anything that is, looks like uh, kamikaze bombers, like in Galaga. Even modern ones do that? I can, I can understand that for bullet hell shooters, but if you have a modern shooter, hopefully they switch it up. They usually make them neon or really easy to see the bullets. Why would they be doing that now? Won't they ever learn? I feel like we're going to see that trend here on the channel. As we play more and more games, we're going to see... I've already seen, like, fall damage with platformers. Why did they put them in, in the beginning? They've already made the mistake. Just don't do that. There's one perfect one. Nice. Oh, yeah, it feels really great making that connection. You can see how whenever the explosion goes off, you have a, a slight radius that it'll still destroy the mana rays. There's our three perfect attacks, so we're now on to level two. And right there, the chords that the Pokey Ship can play on the Atari, that really sounds like an arc arcade game. There's one perfect attack. Let's go for another one. Yes, there's two. Let's see. So they're switching up the patterns. Now you have to memorize. Got it. Three. So we're on to level three. Really, really fun. That is awesome. Yeah, the game over doesn't make it feel so bad. There we go. There's the asteroid field. <laughs> Not really expecting that song. I'll take it, though. So, already starting to get the feel of how the game works. It's just finding out the timing for... Oh, they got me with a shot. The enemy shots are also a little difficult to see. They're only a single line that goes across the screen. Oh, yeah, they dove down deep. Okay, let's see if we have one more left. Or is that the game over? Okay, last one. Notice that the, sh the mana rays are flying in between the asteroid fields. It's three-dimensional, man. It's messing with my mind. Okay, so there's one perfect attack done. Come on, you bastard. Darn. See, when he flies away, you don't get the credit. You gotta be able to take them all out, all out to get that perfect score before they clear out. Yes, there's two. Three. How many levels we have on this? Oh, there we go. Throwing out the 2017 release. What are you talking about, Victor? 2017? That's, that's so far in the future. All right, stage four. Different music for every stage and different screens to play on makes this another winner. There it is. Perfect attack again. Get it, get it. Got him. Two. Let's try for three. So he's doing loops around Saturn. So cool. Oh, we did it. Three. We're going to stage five. I think five is the last stage, and then it loops after that. Tell us something. You can do it. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. And we even got a bonus ship for going this far. Oh, the explosion didn't take him out. Now we have the ship splitting up. And yeah, I can barely make out the shot from, from the enemy that comes down. 
wow, yeah, they, they, they knocked me out fast. At least they're not sh throwing ships at us to attack. It's bullets that we have to dodge, not those. All right, where's our fancy game over? Here it comes. Love it. There you go. That's AE for the Atari home computer. Just as good, if not even better. Well, it's about the same, I'd say. You're getting quality on both sides. I'm going four stars for AE on the Atari home computer. Both of them did great. That's true. Maybe it didn't look good. They didn't have the grid screen at all. They changed it up a little bit. <laughs> yes, thanks for joining us, Traveler from the Future. All right, and with that, let's press forward and see our next game. We're on the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Alien Plague. Let's take a look at Alien Plague. We're going to the United Kingdom to check out Alien Plague. Defend Earth's power cells against surprise attack on the VIC-20. Oh, you need an expansion memory. You need 3K, 8K, or 16K, but it does play with the joystick. There's the example of the screenshot. Usually the unexpanded Vic is what you want because then you don't have to buy anything extra. Let's pop it and play Alien Plague by Computer Room, published by Bubble Bus Software, beginning of July 1982. Alien Plague. Sounds cool. All right, so the joystick does work. Wow, I'm at the bottom of the, the screen as the black ship moving left and right. We're getting constant sounds to blow the aliens up, but it moves so slow. After going from the other shooters we played on the VIC-20 and then AE, this feels like I am just trudging along. So what the aliens do, how do I die? The alien went right through me. The only way you lose the game is if they just they take all the cargo. So you see the aliens coming down, grabbing cargo, going to the top, and you just got to make sure you take them out. It almost feels like I'm playing the game The End, where it just seems inevitable that you're going to lose the game and there's no hope. But um, it is one shot at a time. I can only move left and right. But man, you just trudge along. It almost feels like I'm playing a type in game of how slow I move. Notice that the game is made tile based and the way that it's the way that it's programmed just seemed way too slow. Uh, what happened to our cargo? The background music also sounds so depressing. Feels like I'm going to a funeral. Oh, it's too bad. We know there's better that people could be playing on the VIC-20 in the United Kingdom, and that's game over, right? Oh, wait, all the packages are... Yeah, there it is. And there's the game over. Alien Plague. Uh, it's another game that has the potential for something good, but they just don't execute it very well. It's way too slow. Game time, he told you, 91 seconds. Well, it took us that long because the game was going so slow. Well, there's Alien Plague for you. I'd say it's a bad title. We've seen better video games uh, before on the home computer space. For the VIC-20, even, uh, we've seen much better. So I'm going to say for Alien Plague, it's really, really slow. Uh, we'll go... In, I don't, it, this is around the range of, like, is it close to broken? Because it's not that slow, so I'll go one and a half stars. But it is, it just trudges along way too much. Punk Rock's going to <laughs> Victor, another coaster game. I'm with you on that. Well, if you think that's the case, let's press forward and see our next game. It's time to go to Japan. This is Amadar for the PC 6001 by NEC. We actually have the commercial matching up with the series of computers. It, that's the, uh, the Pakipon, uh, pa the Pakipon, Papikon, Papikon Pop. Just say that five times fast. And this is the release of Amadar. Let's take a look at the box for Amadar. Another one that is by Konami, made by Konami for the home computer. It's official. It's got the logo. Yeah, you can see it's copyrighted by Konami. The front of the box has us going after the crazy monkey. I wasn't a super big fan of Amadar. We've seen other games that were better than Amadar on the home computer already. But here it is, the official release of Amadar. There's the example of what the manual looks like. The back of the box showing you a really tiny screenshot down at the bottom, but it's almost like the Konami advertisement flyers for their arcade cabinets. It looks similar to that. They put the, the screenshot at the bottom. <laughs> That's right. Keep those ratings coming. I love them. There's the manual, and we also have the cartridge because this is cartridge-based. Well, it started with uh, mostly cassettes and then later cartridge base. So that's why this game is very difficult to find to get the ROM to, uh, for the 6001 uh, series. And there's all the, the, the box there. I know this is on sale and I know this game exists because someone has bought it for uh, several thousand yen. 
But uh, to tell you the truth, I couldn't find this one. Frogger and Amadar are the two games that I would love to be able to play here on the channel, but I can't find it anywhere. Even on uh, my Japanese sources and sites, it seems to not exist. Uh, I know it's on some Japanese server somewhere, but if you happen to come across Amadar or Frogger for the PC 6001, let me know so we can play it. So there you go, that is Amadar. All right, so after Amadar, that reminds me of a game that we can now play. So I actually want to go uh, back for a brief moment just because we had someone uh, help us out. We were playing and wanting to uh, check out World Series Baseball on the Apple II, and I did not have the game. But thankfully, we had somebody that was able to uh, give me the game so we can play World Series Baseball. This is a re-release re of another company called Programma. So let's take a look just briefly on what World Series Baseball was like. Let's well, brief intermission. This is by Charles Sullivan Jr. Yes, always looking. Thank you. Yeah, for Famicom, definitely. Okay, so this is technically the Programma release, but it's the exact same game. Even though it says baseball, that's what World Series Baseball said when you booted it up too. It's the same game. Very interesting effect. It looks like we're... Uh, using a low res mode of the Apple II, but they're getting a lot more colors to show on the screen. Fancy. Oh, that's a nice touch. So the lost media of the 6001 reminded me of media that was found that we could play. Yes, right. Time war back to June. Well, uh, you could argue this is also uh, the re-release. So technically, it's from the 70s because the, they re-released the exact same game in 1982. So here we go. We're in. We have both the control to move the outfielders for uh, for player one and pitch. And then we should have... Where's my bat? Here we go. So player two... I'm playing both at the same time. Player two can swing the bat. And then we also have the ball to be thrown. Got it. Go, 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 go. What's interesting is when you go in the outfield to go grab the ball, then you look on the right side. The paddle control moves the... Oh, you can barely see. I move myself to the other side. The paddle control uh, adjusts the far side to move to each base, and then you push the button for the one you want to throw to. All right, so here we go. Let's try it again. Pitch and go. Got it. So here we go. I want to throw to second. So you just move your little paddle cursor. It's moving across the, the different ones. Goes back to the pitcher, nice. Let's move our guys a little bit. Get out of there, move out of the way. I'm having to play two players at the same time. But this is an action baseball game. Very, very impressive, obviously for the first release by Programma. This is the later release by Datamost. It's the exact same thing. Go, but it's action. We're not having to do stats or manage a team. We're actually playing a baseball game on a home computer. Go, 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 quick, 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 and throw it to second. No! Oh, I slipped on the paddle control and threw it to third. <laughs> That's true. The way he swings reminds me of the Atari Golf Club. Ready? And go! What? That was not a strike. Do that again. There it is. Throw to third. Quick, get the ball. What are you doing? Move! No, he's going to run home. <laughs> you can Having to do both at the same time, it takes a while to get used to. Oh, man, but that'd be a lot of fun to play. So there you go, a quick taste of World Series Baseball, or originally just Baseball by Programma. So thankfully, we had to re-rate World Series Baseball. This is pretty cool for a home computer to be able to play an action-based baseball game. Uh, while it is um, obviously dated because it's the re-release, I'm still going to go three and a half stars for World Series Baseball on the Apple II. Nice job. All right, let's go back where we were before after we got sidetracked. So still looking for two games on the NEC PC 6001, but thankfully we had some uh, great people out there to send some stuff so we can showcase it. And with that, let's press forward and see our next game. We're back on the Commodore VIC-20. This is Answer Selection with Joysticks. This is one of the typing games in Compute Magazine by Stephen Levy. There's the magazine that you see for July 1982, and there's his code that we just typed in. Let's type it and play Answer Selection with Joysticks, the beginning of July 1982. So it's the July release, or the, the magazine, and so we would just be typing this in as soon as the magazine was available to us. Push stick in direction of the correct answer. Okay, uh, hat. Good, hat is not a fruit. Push stick for another problem. Push stick in the correct answer. Hat. 
I did the same one again. Push stick in the correct. What is this? This is like terrible Simon, or it feels like I'm doing a, a crazy test. Apple ape fun. Good. These words begin with a, what is going on? Push stick in the correct answer. Sad, sad. Yeah. The other words are, what is this broken? This is terrible. This is one of the worst games I've ever even heard of or played in my life. I'm going to go half star for answer selection with joysticks. <laughs> it is a typing game. So uh, I just felt like you would have wasted time to type it in. No, thank you. Moving on. Yes, half a star. Mark is with me on there. Oh, gosh, yes. Compute's pretty cool, though. You didn't have to type in just this game. There were other ones, too. And with that, let's press forward and see our next game. It's time to go to the UK, and this is the ZX Spectrum. And we're going to play Arcadia. Let's take a look at Arcadia, starting with the box. This is the front of the cassette. That is awesome. Neon colors, and it really pops. Looks fantastic. Imagine. I believe this is the very first game that we've ever seen by Imagine. They are going to have lots of releases in the United Kingdom. Imagine the name of the game. Man, this is going to be a great episode because this is one of the first by Imagine. We have some other uh, company that's coming up soon that we haven't seen yet. And there it is, the back of the cassette. Let's see what other arc we have for Arcadia. <laughs> that was worse than Landfill. That was terrible. Oh, man. There's shovelware, and then there's landfillware. That was landfillware. All right, so here we go. This is the cassette case for Arcadia. And what you see in magazines at the time, imagine a company that brought into being by top professional programmers, graphic designers, and software marketing specialists. They know what they're doing. Arcadia, the name of the game, specially created to be the fastest, meanest, most addictive shoot 'em up game you've ever desired. Wave after wave of the most loathsome and deadly aliens billow hypnotically toward your space fighter with deadly intent. But then you have to do plasma disruptors and an ion thrust drive, haven't you? And then it's even on the VIC-20, which we're going to see next. Very nice. There's the cassette we're going to pop in with another example of artwork or advertisement. Spectrum and VIC-20. Vic oh, this one's the later one because it says Commodore 64. I don't know what that is yet. They're speaking in the future. <laughs> I hope it was. There's a lot more down there. All right, we also have what's on the inside sleeve to play. Score for each alien destroyed is the number of the current level. The control for this game is very unique. I always say that because we play every single game. Uh, left and right, you're going to use the caps, which uh, and then the any other controls on the bottom row of keys on your ZX Spectrum will work. Let me switch myself back over on this side so you can see. So that's normal to have caps and then another button on your ZX Spectrum to move left and right. But this allows you to use the entire bottom row alternating to use left and right. You can use anything on the bottom. Then the whole next uh, row is everything to thrust your spaceships forward. So you can use Z, C, B, M, and spacebar to, oh, I'm sorry, A, S, D, F, G, all the way across the row to for the next button. And then fire is any of the top row. So it's almost like they designed this where you get really frustrated with shooters and you're like, quick, I need the button to fire and I can't find it. Well, they have a whole row for the button. Any one of the keys on the third row is used for, to, to fire your disruptor bolts. Pressing any key not on the top row will allow you to resume the game because if you push two at a time, you can pause the game. Arcadia is just one range of exciting and original games for your ZX Spectrum. See the Imagine advertisements in a recent computer magazine for further details. Oh, that's right. They did do On the Dragon. Uh, yeah, so are they primarily in the United Kingdom? Are we only going to see them there? And then they have loading instructions, which we don't need to follow. At least I hope not. This has several different alternate versions. Let's play the first one by Imagine Software, David H. Lawson. The beginning of July, 1982. Imagine Software. Sounds like I did something wrong already. All right, so bear in mind, the controls are pretty wonky. Wow, look at all the color. It is exuding color. So cool. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm just going in and just, just destroying uh, some ships that are coming down. But the, the way that the game's played, you move left, right, but you also have a way to thrust your ship forward and then attack. Sounds like the sirens are going off. All right, let's do this. Oh, the explosion's really nice. The color is all over the board, and we're starting to see the beginning of the infamous bleeding color of the ZX Spectrum. 
I think this this game favors. It looks pretty cool. They're using the beeper sound effect not the correct way, though. It sounds like my ship's just farting to the top of the screen. <laughs> I think I can just thrust forward as long as I want to, right? Yeah. Go, go, go! Nice. And then the way it works is if you destroy three, or maybe it's four waves. Yeah, there we go. You move on to the next level. So now we're on level two. So in a way, this reminds me of games like um, Sneakers, where the waves of enemies just switch up into something different. But honestly, every one of these shooters that allows you to just move left and right on a fixed screen, they're all fixed shooters and they're all based on Galaxian or Space Invaders. Unless something does something truly unique with the gameplay, then it'll, it'll, set, it'll set them apart. But I'm just, I'm, I gotta tell you, this is the best shooter we've ever played on the ZX Spectrum. Of all the shooters, this is awesome. Look at this. Look how much this is happening on the screen. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> And the explosion at the end is really nice. Oh, yeah, so this was later on the dragon. Okay, so we will see that one later. Yeah, this is great. You essentially just have left, right, moving your ship up to thrust, and then fire. So that's all you have for controls. The way they designed it, though, for the keyboard giving you alternate places to push. Almost. Where's my lives? Okay, at the very top, I see. They give us a few to go for. Here's our last one. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. For the ZX Spectrum owners, this is one of the best, if not the best shooter you could have at the time. And you know the majority of people in the United Kingdom had this system if they went the home computer route. Uh, unless your family was uber rich and you had the BBC Micro. Then you could play things like Arcadians. Or Defender. <laughs> I know. Constant flatulent sounds. See, the parents bought the computer because they wanted their kids to be smarter and do well at school. And then they end up playing this, and now begins the all the moms in the United Kingdom just yelling, turn that down. Because this all plugged into the TV. It was all plugged in with RF. So you had to usually borrow or ask the family if you're going to plug in your ZX Spectrum to play. And not too many people had the luxury of the two televisions at the time. Yeah, if it was just a Spectrum, I would give this four. It's awesome. This is pretty nice. Of all the games you could play on a home computer, though, I'm going to say for Arcadia, this is a three and a half star game. It's still uh, really good. Plays plays well, uh, programmed well. You can tell they spent a lot of time on this, and it works great for the ZX Spectrum. But that's not all. There is also Arcadia for the Commodore VIC-20. We saw the ad. You knew it was coming. So here you go. Let's check out Arcadia for the Commodore VIC-20, starting with a box. It's the same as it was before. The name of the game by Imagine. And let's check the other artwork we have for the VIC-20 version. Still on cassette, Arcadia has the name created to be the fastest, meanest, most addictive game you've ever desired. That's pretty, that's a, that's a bold claim. Game features include fully animated, smooth, high-resolution, multicolor graphics, a real-time clock, and special narrow playfield. 100% machine code. That's the way we like it. Yeah. Got three and a half stars there. Yeah, and I'm with you, Errol. A lot of times I, I play the games and I think, man, if this was the only thing you had as the system, you, you'd be rating this totally different. But here on the channel, since we play every home computer, we're basing our scale on that. It's a very broad one. All right, and there's the example of the screenshot. What? That looks crazy. We also have the inside sleeve for Arcadia on the VIC-20. You command the starship Arcadia. The most sophisticated space technology ever devised is under your control including the mind-shattering ion thrust drive and the awesome power of dual plasma disruptor guns. This makes you the most powerful individual in the galaxy. The power. And in some quarters, the most hated. The Atarian... Wait, the Atarian? Wait a second. 
They're using Atari in this awesome. The Atarian nation has been steadily and inexorably extending its empire, quietly engulfing smaller, more vulnerable planets. It's now in a position to... Um, of immense power and poised to make a bid to enslave the entire galaxy. I think they're trying to tell us something. The only force capable of repelling the Atarian hordes is under your command. If only they knew what happened in 1983. Every fiber of your body quivers with tension as you prepare to repel the initial thrust of the Atarian battle fleet. Playing Arcadia, the spaceship Arcadia, has been specially equipped with dual plasma disruptor guns and an ion thrust drive. That's right. Good luck. We're going to need it. And then they have, oh, they have a little more information too. This is what we've seen on the inside sleeve on the ZX Spectrum. How to play. <laughs> yes, the very first time a game story was telling us the arcade or, or the, uh, cons the the video game market. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. And we also have different versions in, in multiple parts. We're going to play the very first one. Pop in that cassette tape and play by Imagine Software at some time in July of 1982. All right, so we're in. This is the very first shooter or video game that decided to go vertical and pretend like they're playing on a vertical monitor. Check it out. All right, so the ZX Spectrum did not have a joystick you could plug in. So we had to do everything on the keyboard, the spongy keyboard. Now we're on the Commodore VIC-20. I got my joystick plugged in, and it works. I didn't have to push any key on the keyboard. And I'm moving left and right with the joystick, and I move... How do I use the thrusters? Because there's only one button. There it is. Oh, right, we're not farting at least. <laughs> That's so bizarre. It's Tate mode on the Commodore Big 20. <laughs> wow, yeah, this is really cool playing with the controller on the Big 20. <laughs> and I could choose to go further back because notice how fast their shots fall down. Yeah, you don't have a lot of reaction time. You gotta be really quick. Wow, yep, they're draining our lives really, really fast. Those Atarians, they're gonna take over the galaxy. We have to stop them. So while we don't have farting like the ZX Spectrum sounds, we do have just random garbled computer noise in the background. Oh, there we go, same enemies. Gosh, it is, they're raining down bullets on us. Yeah, the improvement is the control joystick, obviously. And a very interesting vertical orientation. We haven't seen any game one do this at home. We've only seen this in the arcade. It's obviously, you know, at, they're, they're just squishing the border in, so it, it, this isn't a game you would have turned your CRT on its side. <laughs> so intense. Do my bullets go all the way? Interesting, they don't. So you can't just hang back, yeah, you can't hang back at the bottom and fire because your bullets will extinguish at a certain point. They are allowing us to fly up further than the, the other game on the ZX Spectrum. Yeah, Arcadia is a cool idea. We've already seen Arcadians on the BBC Micro, and so I'm curious if they saw that example and wanted to make a shooter for the Spectrum and the, and the VIC-20. But this is the first, uh, or one of the first games by Imagine Software that we've seen on the channel. We got second level now? No, no. What in the world? Here we go. So now level two. Gosh. <laughs> the bullets come down so fast. Yeah, good point, Curtis. That's pretty clever. That's why it appears to be jerky. Oh, we made it level three. Okay. New enemy type. Gosh, yes. The explosions kill you, too. <laughs> wow. That was like overkill explosion. 
So you have to be out of the way of their, uh, the, the explosion they leave behind or you're going to die as well. Gosh, yeah, very, very difficult. But uh, w whether it's high difficulty or not, it's still a really good game. Arcadia is really fun. All right, so I'm going to say, just like the ZX Spectrum, this is a three and a half star game of all the games you could play on the home computer. What do you think? Is Arcadia pushing anything further that we have seen on a home computer? Or is this still close to the average range or near around there? All right, so after Arcadia, let's press forward and see our next game. It's time to go on the MS-DOS. That's right, our IBM, trusty IBM PC, and play some artillery in 1982. So artillery is, this is one that I don't have the information for except a few screenshots. So let's just play some artillery. Now, I am a little naive. When I, I actually thought this was the very first artillery game ever. And now that I've been doing work in the, the channel and seen the history behind it, artillery has been around since 1972. 72. It's been 10 years since they've done any artillery variants. Here on this channel, we've already seen about uh, 8 to 10 artillery variants. So this is obviously not the first, but this is the one most fondly remembered by myself as the game that started all the shooter games. All right, so we are on a color monitor. So let's go color. We're not going monochrome, even though the text is all monochrome. The shoot, you shoot shells at an angle and velocity, and the example is 70 or 100. If you haven't seen us play artillery games before, or you're not familiar, artillery games are essentially you're just picking the angle and then how powerful you want the shot to go, and you just take turns back and forth. It's a bare-bones strategy game. Each gun company starts with 100 men. After each shot, there's a deserter on each side. Near misses can cause casualties dependent on distance and number of men remaining. A near miss, which could bring a gun company to less than 10, is treated as a direct hit. A running total of base strength is maintained between battles for each side. Misses leave craters. Therefore, shots can be used to lower a large mountain. If desertion brings your gun company to less than five men, your gun misfires. Type yes if you want varying wind. No, no, we do not. That increases the difficulty. This is what I remember. Hearing the PC speakers sound like this and play artillery. This is the artillery I played the most of on DOS. I mean, look at that drawing in. That's great. Very nice. This also has all the mechanics that make an artillery game. Destructible environments. Every environment's a different one that gets created. And um, the, the the idea that you have a score or men that, that are going to be going away if you miss shots. Okay, so we're going to start right here, right there by my shoulder. That first blip is who's going to play first. Since we have this angle so steep, we have the wind coming at us at 9, 90 degrees. I'm going to go for a 70 degree shot and then let's hit it hard let's go 200 and see what happens there it goes you can barely see the pixel i'm not sure if, how much you can see on the screen it went way up to the top let's see if it even comes down the other side there it is oh and it missed so we lost one minute on that side and it keeps the record of where your shot was uh, what the angle and speed of your shot was and i saw in the chat oh yes worms is so good and this is like the beginning of the idea of what worms is Okay, so now we have to get our shot. Uh, let's try that again. Let's do 70, but we won't shoot it as hard. Let's only do uh, 150. And go! You can see the tiny, tiniest little pixel. The little bullet is flying to the other player. This is a great two-player game. A strategy game taking turns. Oh, just missed him. And you can see it blew off a little chunk. Here, I'll move myself out of the way. Over there on the side. And then look, let's switch it out to the other end. No way did I just break... Oh, I did, because I switched out the camera. All right, so we'll have to go back and uh, come back in again. Leave and come right back. Looks like I won't be able to switch the camera. All right, so let's go color again. We got the rules, got it. And no, we do not want the wind to vary. That means every time you take your turn, the wind's going to change direction and you have to adjust. Part of the fun of this game is you make the shot and then you have to make the slight angle change or power of the shot and just make, make little changes to it. Okay, you see we have a different environment. We start on the right side. This time let's go with a 45 degree angle and let's do just 100 and see where that goes. Oh, nope, not enough. A little bitty one, bump, and blows a little piece off. Okay, so this one's going to be a lot higher. Let's go with a 70 degree angle and 200 and go flying over the top. Oh, way too much. But good angle. We probably need to lower it down. Oh, that's a good point. Scorched Earth. 
is another really popular one. Uh, I actually never heard of Scorched Earth, even though uh, this is the one I played the most. Yes, they're all the same artillery variants. Okay, so we're back on the other side. Let's change it up to a 50 degree, but let's go 150 shot. So on the right side, let's go over the hill. Yes, got it. The wind's blowing. Let's see if it blows enough. Oh, this is it. This is it. Go. Oh, my gosh. We did knock off 10 uh, men on one on their side, so that was a good hit. Okay, so this time, let's go with the same 70, but let's lower the power to 150. Go, go, go. You can see the wind's blowing. I think it's going to blow too much. Yep, over the top. Yeah, even off the screen, not going to happen. Okay, so if we did 50... 150 and this is kind of where the fun is if you have the wind change then you got to calculate even more in your head what to do but now we know if we were that close with the shot let's just make it 151 and see if we get a direct hit ready go come on wind's the same it should be right on him yes how many was that oh yeah we knocked a lot off of his his men so now let's do on we're back on the left side Let's do uh, shorten it. Let's do a hundred and see what that does. Does it even go over the hill? No, it does not. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tricky with the winds. You see, it blew off a small chunk of that. All right, so let's do fifty. What if we do one fifty-two? Will that be a direct hit? When you play with someone else and you go back and forth taking turns, it gets a little tense because you realize that the other player. That's it, right? Oh no, it dropped them. All, it, it dropped their men down to forty-two. Yeah, this is so much fun to play. All right, so let's go 70, and let's do 140. Does that take us over? No, actually, we can't go over the hill because let's do 80-degree uh, angle, and let's do 150. Because the wind's going to blow. This is it. Come on, keep going, keep going. Oh, that's so close. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. The pet, I think we already played the pet version of artillery here on the channel yeah 79 is what my first guess is and the, we played a few other ones uh commodore vic 20 and uh, other home computers apple 2 had one as well all right so let's just keep pelting this guy 152 that should be the direct hit go wind is the same should be right on top oh yeah looks good yes that's it <laughs> They are gone. And then ask you if you want to play again. Sure, yeah, we'll play again. Wait five seconds. I don't think we got that kind of time. Yeah, this is a blast to play. As usual, it is bare bones tactical strategy game, but it, it does a great job. So there you go. That is artillery for MS DOS, the classic artillery for MS DOS. I'd say of all the games you could play on a home computer, this one hits all the marks of what the artillery game is supposed to be like and play. We've played some that don't have the destructible environments or don't have the um, uh, ability to make op uh, option changes, but this one does. So I'd say of all the games you could play on MS-DOS, this artillery is, is awesome. I'm going to say three and a half stars. Oh, that's right. PC took off with it. Oh, VGA cards. You're talking again of the future, Errol. I don't know what you mean. It's 1982. We only have CGA here. So there you go, three and a half stars for artillery. And with that, that's where we got to put our video game playing on pause this evening. Playing computer games, playing arcade games, playing handheld games, and console games all over the place in July of 1982. That's it for today, and like I always say, can you really have too many breakout variants? Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.